Right. I remember that you were one of the early sort of the supporter of Hobart. And I, I remember I look back and I said, well, do we have the infrastructure? Do we have the population growth? Do we have this? Do we have this? Is it Hobart is simply because we don't have any other alternate as such? And we've seen some of the statistics. So I suppose the question comes in in our mind, in my mind, that is it too late or what is really driving Hobart? Yeah, really good question. I think there's a couple of our clients in the in the audience today who we were, we've been buying in Hobart for close to two and a half years now. Um, and we're probably dialing back buying there at the moment. On we still are in drips and drabs. Definitely not the volume we were probably 12, 24 months ago. At the time when we probably were first investing in Hobart, the the numbers were, and it's kind of similar to where we see Brisbane at the moment, where they looked good. However, things hadn't necessarily happened, and there were things such as. I'll probably outline a couple of the key things that we saw in Hobart at the time, one of which was most certainly vacancy rates. At the time we were investing there, they were sub 1%. And it wasn't just sub 1% when you looked at it and think, well, is it just certain certain pockets which are sub 1%? Holistically, Hobart Greater Region was sub 1%. And we dug a bit deeper and figured out how many properties are actually available for rent. And it was about 23 24%. When you look at that, you think, geez, there's not many properties here that are actually on the rental market. So how can this change? when the actual government is not pro-development. So what you had was an also, also an issue that the government wasn't incentivising people to build. So you didn't necessarily have developers, investors thinking, well, I can get good yield for my money. Yeah, the market hasn't necessarily started to grow exponentially, but there's no incentive, there's no first homeowner grants at the time. There wasn't any going to be uh, things like uh, affordable housing schemes, etc. In the last 12 months, we've seen some changes. State government was handed down about four days ago there. However, in that time, we've still seen a heightened level of jobs growth. So jobs creation was a big one. They saw about nine and a half, ten percent jobs creation in the past 12 months. In addition to that, as much as it's quite small, percentage-wise across the country, they saw a much larger percentage of people staying in Hobart. The biggest issue Hobart's had over the years is when there's no jobs, people flee to Melbourne, they flee to Sydney, and they don't go back. And that leaves a whole of skilled labour, higher earners, as well as population growth and <coughs> pressure on housing. Whereas the last couple of years with that jobs creation, they've retained all the university graduates, as well as incentivised with federal government to a degree, baby boomers now having the opportunity to sell their family asset, take $300,000 out of their family asset for both, both owners of that property up to that amount, put it into their super and then buy outside of that. We've seen also there's been a bit more of that baby boomer buying into that market to get an affordable housing as well as put a whole bunch of more money from their family home into their super and have a much better lifestyle from it, which was probably a bit of a side expectation for us. But they're things that have put a lot more pressure on that 10 to 15 kilometre radius area of Hobart over time. We're probably going to buy there, I think, realistically for another maybe 6, 12 months, maybe. But we're extremely selective now because what we were buying, literally the first house I bought for a client in Hobart was an auction mortgagee. I was the only person there. It was me, an auctioneer, and it was also the real estate agent. And it was like this in front of a house. There was no one there. It was a trustee, so they had to forcibly sell the house at auction. Called it three times, no bid, obviously. And then after there was a negotiation, and that property is probably worth about 70, 75% more today than what we paid for it. And it's yielding about 9%. And they're the properties that, you know, Truth be told, if I knew it was going to happen, I would have bought that house. I would have bought every other house over the last two years that we bought there. But, I mean, there are opportunities. I think the question is, is there other markets that show that opportunity 